What won't you watch? Irreversible. Yeah. Because of... Intensity of the rape and violence. Yeah. So violent, rapey movies you don't, you won't watch. Oh, no, no. Blue Velvet's in my top five. Well, okay, so give me some more. Well, uh, you know, Lars von Trier. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really watch his movies. Kind of the same reason as Irreversible, because I think he just tries to make the audience miserable. And yeah. I think some people really go in for that. You know what I do? When there's a movie that I know I'm not going to want to watch, like Antichrist or mm-hmm. Irreversible, I will go online and try to find the most detailed plot synopsis that I can. Because I want to know what happens. Oh, yeah. But I don't want to watch it or experience it. Yes. What's a movie that you love that most people hate? Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Okay. But that's a very long story of why I love that movie. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Craig, welcome back to the basement. Oh, it was a pleasure to be here. Last time we met, we watched this. Top Gun. The highest grossing movie of 1986 and, like it or not, a cultural benchmark of the 80s. Tonight's movie is just the opposite of that. That's right. Tonight we are going to watch a flop. When you're in trouble, don't call the A-Team. Don't call the Delta Force. Call the Mega Force. <laughs> this is the first time you have introduced a movie that I have never even heard of. Released in 1982, starring box office heartthrob Barry Bostwick, and directed by ex-stuntman Hal Needham, the man behind Smokey and the Bandit and Cannonball Run, Megaforce only made about a quarter of its estimated $20 million budget at the box office. It was also nominated for three Razzie Awards, Worst Picture, Worst Director, and Worst Supporting Actor for Michael Beck, for which he lost to Ed McMahon. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing. What are you feeling right now? Well, um, I, I'm, I'm stunned. Uh, <laughs> As usual, I have a little gift for you oh, there. There you go. Excellent. Gift. It's a Megaforce game for the Atari. Please, won't you join us on the old leather couch? For the sci-fi stink fest known as Megaforce. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Megaforce. Megaforce begins with explosions. Why? Zara and a stuffy British general are dropped off in the desert. They didn't even have the decency to send a helicopter. Not in the cool vodka tonic. I'd really be able to tolerate his bitching and moaning more if I knew who he was. Where they meet Dallas, played by Razzie nominee Michael Beck. That's all, folks. How bad was Ed McMahon that he beat this guy? After showing them a hologram of a beach for no reason at all, he takes them to meet the Megaforce. Oh, oh. awesome. Here we go. Here comes the Megaforce. We're going to learn something about the plot. A group of spandex-wearing, motorcycle-riding daredevils. Led by Ace Hunter. Played by Barry Bostwick. Commander Hunter, I presume. Uh, call me Hunter. All right, he's already <laughs> overacting. <laughs> so the general and Zara are quite impressed by this, and Zara is quite impressed by Hunter. Put on some shorts or something. For obvious reasons, because we're talking about Barry Bostwick here. That man's got more degrees than a red hot thermometer. I got more similes than a. Book. <laughs> the Megaforce is looking to take down Guerrera. 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 The evil General Guerrera. A unspecified Latin dictator of some sort who's blowing things up. It turns out Guerrera... I can't pronounce the guy's goddamn name. Guerrera is Ace's old friend. But also his old nemesis. Guerrera and I go back quite a long ways. Jump school counterinsurgency. We served together for 18 months. 
who stole his lighter or, or something. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. They plan out their attack on Guerrero. Our resupply plane will take a new heading south-southwest to its drop zone at 0400. Please excuse my boner. And it's all very complex. And the one thing I understood about the entire thing was that they were going to do one part of it in four minutes flat. Four minutes? Isn't that a bit ambitious? When Zara hears about the mission, she wants to get on board. What else would you like to see me do to prove I'm capable of going on this mission? Put on various other neckerchiefs? <laughs> they have a... <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this. Ah, a nice aerial ballet. A poorly blue-screened aerial ballet. Ah. <laughs> this is this is like skydiver porn. And this is the money shot right here. <laughs> For Zara and Hunter, skydiving is a dance of love. Thumb kissing weirdos. You love them in blue, and you love them in red. But most of all, you love them in blue. And most of all, you wear blue on your head. That's totally inapplicable to anything that's going on here. And it's dumb. Isn't that the log line for this movie? They spring into action. I am a bee. <laughs> oh, here we go. Universal sign that there's a genius on board. <laughs> I know. Have someone doing a Rubik's Cube casually, then he does it, then we know he's a genius. And everything goes great in exactly four minutes. They blow up everything in the middle of the night. The actions of the Mega, the act, the mega Force raid is taken as an act of war, and they have to escape before being gunned down by Guerrero, Guerrero, Guerrero's forces. Guerrero? Guerrero? General Guerrero. And they wait for the big final battle. That is some prime Bostwick butt crack. I tried. I'm sorry. Would you like a pastel I headband? I wanted it to be different. The plot of this movie. Bust wig, butt crack, and a front bulge to boot. In the 70s, we could be idealists, but today, it's too expensive. You know, there's one thing you never understood. That there are some things that you can't put a price on. Clouds. Whenever I'm really frustrated, I go... I would have from this distance, I can see his moose claw. There's a climactic showdown full of explosions and shooting. They shoot the rockets and then they drive the things and there's tanks. And it's, oh, it's very exciting. Taste the rainbow. And they kill all the bad guys and then they all have to get back to the plane. The Megaforce makes it to the plane that's gonna take them to safety, but Ace falls off his motorcycle. It looks like it's curtains for Ace Hunter. Oh, he's never gonna catch up. But at the last possible second, he shoots off his flying rockets and then he flies to the plane. Oh, now. It's all pretty implausible. It's implausible. But the good guys always win. Even in the 80s. The good guys always win, Craig even in the 80s. That's good to know. You know, that seems to be the tagline of the movie, but I would just like to point out the cover of this DVD, and there's a big old banner at the top here that says, Deeds Not Words. That was never said in this movie, Craig. I've learned one thing. Deeds Not Words. It's all on the wheel. When are they gonna say that? They didn't need the words. They had the deeds. You just blew my mind. <laughs> That's why you hired me. <laughs> this movie 
is everything that a bad movie should be. Because the reason why I don't like to watch bad movies for the most part is that they're just boring. They're so poorly made, poorly edited, and they just bore me to death. And you feel sad yeah. when watching it because like everyone in this movie was in this movie. This was a fun movie. This was a good experience. It's got a lot of action. So much action, in fact, that you don't even know why there's action happening. And um, the comedy is, is pretty, pretty cornball. <laughs> and not very well delivered. Y'all cool! It's right on schedule, guys! Parts of it are just so stylistically outrageous that it's very entertaining to watch. You don't feel sad about the actors. No, They no. probably had a great time filming it. They had a lot of sex. They did a lot of cocaine, probably. <laughs> they were fine. The raid in real time was quite a nice touch. I don't know if I've ever seen that, where they have the countdown in the movie. That actually sure. really worked. It wasn't the greatest action sequence of all time, but you knew exactly how long you'd have to suffer through it. More bad movies should have countdowns. <laughs> well, you know you're not enjoying a movie when you check, like, on the DVD, where it's like you see how much time is remaining. I do that all the time. I do that with any movie. I'm obsessed with the length of a movie and how much is left. And it has nothing to do with whether I'm enjoying it or not. Ah. Final thoughts on Megaforce. It was quite a thrill ride. I don't know if I was as excited during the movie as I was during the opening credits. It sparked some sort of, I'm watching cable late at night. And it's the 80s type feel about it. And then after that, it didn't get quite as exciting. I disagree with you a little bit. I think if all bad movies were this much fun, I'd be watching bad movies all the time. For 90 minutes of 28 frames per second, proof. 24 frame, frames per second. 90 minutes of 24 frames of second of proof. Nope. No, you're not going to edit? You're not going to save me on that one? For, I'm using the one where you're wrong. No, well, that's how bad of a movie it was. They used 28 frames per second. It would have made sense <laughs> if they would have slowed it down a little bit. Megaforce was a mega... Farce. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I was saving it the entire movie. Now let's do Seen It. Seen It! Twite Man says, How about some Hitchcock? I'd recommend Rope if you want something a little different from his normal fare. Rope. I've seen it. I've seen it too. Craig, what's special about Rope? It's all done in one shot. It's all done in one location. It's a bottle movie. If you've ever heard of bottle episodes in television shows, there are also bottle movies. So for this edition of Seen It, we are going to do a salute to bottle movies. Those movies that take place in one single location. They have a claustrophobic intensity that, for me, has always been captivating. I'll just start throwing them out. You start knocking them down. The Breakfast Club. Seen it. Saw it in the theater. Classic bottle movie. Unfortunately, it's a movie that doesn't really hold up very well. Because I watched it recently and I was like, oh, these kids need to get over themselves. Well, you know, if you're a teenager, it yeah. matters. We're yeah. grown-ups, and so now we're the principals. Yep. Now we raid Barry Manilow's wardrobe. That's right. And yeah. now we are the bull. Mess with it, you get these things. One of my favorite comedies of the 80s a little underrated film called Clue. Clue, yes. Talk about it like a star-studded cast. Who's uh, who's all in Clue? Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, Michael McKeon, Martin Mull. You know who also also was in that movie? <laughs> From the Go-Go's. What's her name? Jane Weedlin? Jane Weedlin is in that movie. Who is she? I am your singing telegram. Boom. Oh, wow. That's why when the door opens, you immediately have a crush on the singing telegram girl. Every time you watch it, it makes you laugh just as much as when you first watched it. The flames <laughs> rising. <laughs> Everyone got a letter, and you 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 got a letter. <laughs> you know what I think is great about bottle movies? They're in one location, so there's nothing there but each other. There's no cars to drive. There's no uh, picnics to... to Go on. Yeah. You can't get in a, a scuffle with a dog. You're just in a room with a bunch of people, and it's just characters interacting. And that's what's great about bottle movies, and that's what's great about the boys in the band. A bunch of gay dudes get together, and secrets come out. Uh, yeah, it's like 1969, 1970, based on a play. It's, a lot of uh, bottle movies are based on plays. William Friedkin directed it. Who I did? think it was before he did The Exorcist. Yes, before The Exorcist. Here's a movie that a lot of people see as uh, arty and pretentious and inscrutable, but it's actually a movie that I've watched twice and I'm looking forward to watching it again, My Dinner with Andre. I don't think it's already at all, and I don't think it's inscrutable. It's just 
atypical. The whole thing takes place in a restaurant. Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory have a ponderous discussion about life, basically. It's about basically, life. Basically, yeah. It's interesting to sit at the table with these guys. At different times, you relate to them in different ways. Uh, this next movie is a bottle movie with an asterisk, but it's also one of my favorite movies of all time. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? All takes place in a house. Mike Nichols changed it up a little bit. He had them go to a bar for a little bit, but even the scene in the bar feels like an extension of the house. It still feels claustrophobic and tense. It's like this bubble of... Te- wherever these people go, there's this bubble of tension that surrounds them, and they can never escape it. The movie is a battle between four people, and it's an acting battle, too. And they're all astounding, and they're just beating the crap out of each other with their words. It's, it's amazing. Well, that's seen it. We hope you enjoyed the show. Are there any bottle movies that we missed? Let us know. I'd like to see them if I haven't. Please keep leaving comments, and uh, please keep on doing what you do. Because it's working. It's working. Good day to you. Keep going. This could be a 30 minute episode. <laughs> Guerrera. 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 Alright, I'm done making love to the camera. Beep, 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 that's all, folks.